to Maypole Farm and we are in another Monday recording marathon as I'm in a rather fine hotel again. So today we're going to be doing a couple of beet harvesting contracts. I thought that would be a, uh, a good way to earn a bit more cash, get some root crops in to store for winter. And I thought I could do a bit of course playage, which uh, doesn't work out quite as intended. Um, if you saw me do the video on the this um, classic contracting setup, the reason there's another beet harvester is because uh, it might have changed actually. When I set this up, the version of better contracts that was out, if you didn't have something that the game recognized as a beet harvester, it threw a bunch of errors. So that's why that's there. Um, actually, that might link to a problem that I have in a moment, but let's just get all the kit set up. I'm going to do this. Um, contract on field one and field two they are opposite each other that means we can get twice as much kit which means this will be uh, a little bit easier as it i had planned to use course plate for this let me just show off some of my reverse driving skill with a dolly trailer i think i'm getting better at this um i'm not brilliant obviously uh, but i think i'm getting better this is not my finest i will admit um trying I would say I'm very trying. I know, bad that joke. Um, yeah, so the reason that that harvester is there is to stop it throwing errors. Um, once I've got all the kit, I actually um, save the game and go back out and go into the vehicles like XML and remove those just so they're not hanging about on the map. I think that might have changed. And uh, if you're on Discord, the uh, the stuff that's coming up is why I was asking about the other beat harvester on Kingworld. So there is an older style trailed beat harvest, which is actually quite nice working with as well. Needs big tractor though. Um, but I might integrate into this setup if it works okay, because um, I thought, you know, really easy way or nice way to get this job done um, is stick these two on course plate and then I can cart for them. We've got a lot of carting tractors, but probably too many, but I thought that would be a good way of doing it. So. Just going to do a standard to implement course plate course, you know, nothing particularly spectacular. Um, you've seen me do this loads of times and I've done it loads of times. So two tools, three headlands that effectively gives us six headlands, which is about 18 meters. These things turn on like battleships. So that was why I went for that, just to give it plenty of actually four headlands, plenty of room to turn, which, uh, yeah, these things do not turn well. Um, and copy the course, ready to transfer it across to the um, the other harvester. Um, I'm not sure what I'm doing here. I just seem to be sitting. I was recording this while I was uh, sitting with Mrs. D. And actually, I might have been chatting to her at that point. So that's why not a lot is happening. But I'm going to jump ahead a little bit anyway. So you're going to see me for a bit now backing with course plate. And I think... Quite often as happens when I chat about this stuff, I think I've realized what the problem is. Um, so, wow, I really was sat there for quite a long time. I wonder if this is when my Amazon order turned up. It could be that. We might have to do some editing. Uh, all right, maybe the mouse has come to life, so maybe we're good. Um, yeah, so when? Seriously, dude, click some buttons. Um, there we go. Um, so you'll see I click the go button and nothing happens and uh, basically the harvester sits there and you'll see me pull the log up and it seems to not be recognizing this as a beet harvester and as I said the uh, the better contract setup doesn't recognize it as a beet harvester now I am sure that in FS22 I've used this with course play but maybe I haven't I certainly did in FS19, but maybe I haven't used this with course play in FS22. Um, so yeah, I just cannot get this thing to work at all with course play. If you've used this with course play, then please stick a comment below of what you had to do to get it to work, because I can't. Also, actually, I haven't had a chance to play with it yet, but thank you to Norfolk Farmer for sending me the tips on getting course play to work for karting with combine. I haven't had a chance to play with it yet, but there's definitely some different things that you did in the process. So I do need to have a look at that. Um, maybe later this week, who knows? It's another busy week. And I, actually, this is quite a cool week this week. I'm just looking in the course play settings, but I don't achieve anything. So there's no point in chatting about it particularly. Um, the teenager is going away for five days. Yeah, 
We're gonna have the house. Well, I was gonna say we're gonna have the house to ourselves, but we've got the four dogs in the house. But yeah, five days, kid free. Can't wait. Um, annoying that I have a meeting on one of those days, but yeah, that should be nice. Um, it's been a while since Mrs. D and I have had some time like that. Uh, unfortunately, with her ill health, it won't be quite as, you yeah, know, maybe won't be able to do quite as much as we might have done in the past. But yeah, no, nothing planned yet, but partly because I'm working three days of it. But yeah, we'll see what we can do. Hopefully, we'll get up to some things. Yeah, some things. Um, for those that have been following along recently and a couple of you have asked and I really appreciate that my dad is doing a lot better now um, it's be it's Monday I said it's my mon Monday evening recording session while I'm away with work um, it's been nearly two weeks since he was in the hospital last with his heart problem I think it's been a good 10 days since he had any significant symptoms he uh, has seen the cardiologist and he didn't have and there was nothing like mega urgent screaming out, which is good. Um, he, my dad has had a CT scan done today on most of his body and they're doing some other tests as well. So at the moment, he seems to be fine. Um, the medication that he's on is working and he's back to normal um, and they're doing tests to find out what might have caused it. So it's a lot much, much, much happier about that. Um, yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, the downside well, not the downside it, it is life seems to be throwing stress at me at the moment i'm still crapping i think at this point i actually give up so what i'm going to do i'll come back to the story what i'm going to do is just run a bunch of headlands and then we we'll use base game workers to do this job because yeah i mean that will get the job done um yeah life keeps throwing stress at us um last week joker the old greyhound had problems with his back hurting and his legs i don't know if i said about that or not uh, Saturday night, Mrs. D was up with him most of the night with him being sick. Um, yesterday, I spent most of the day with him. He was sick a few more times, and then by the evening, he seemed to settle down. Uh, he's been okay today so far, apparently. Um, I have not heard from Mrs. D in a little while, and I seem to have no phone signal in this hotel room, which is kind of crap. So, am I allowed to say that? I don't know. So yeah, hopefully he's been doing okay. Um, I'm in a different hotel to my usual one um, because I kind of forgot to book the other one. So yeah, I seem to have no phone signal, which is going to be a bit of a nightmare. Um, something else that I thought that it just popped into my head to talk about and I've gotten instantly, which is kind of annoying. Um, old Greyhound. Spoken to me, it's just dear. So, I'm just trying to work through what it was in my head. It was something that I watched in a video and I really can't remember it. Oh well, it'll come back to me. Um, yeah, so that that's kind of that. It's a bit for a bit. Yeah. He's old, he's very old. He's very well, I say he's very He's 11. Um, he had a very hard life. He was in kennels for racing kennels for seven years, um, and then in I think seven years or five years and then in adoption kennels for another two years waiting to be adopted um, it took a very long time for him to be adopted because he has what's called an undershot jaw his bottom jaw is not uh, not long enough um, so we thought it looked really cute some people didn't like it. he's very big as well um, and weirdly people do not seem to like dogs with black fur they're much less popular for adoption um, as black fur. So he, uh, he was kind of overlooked for a few years. Um, we fell for his story of he'd been stuck in kennels for two years. So yeah, I have remembered what I was going to talk about. I'll come back to that. Um, yeah, so we kind of fell for his story and we ended up adopting him. And uh, he's had a lot of health problems over the years. I've spoken about quite a lot of them in different places. Um, he had something called pancreatitis, which I, I've mentioned, which is where he's but essentially his body started digesting his organs uh, which was pretty serious he was in intensive care for quite a while with that one and uh, since then he's not been the healthiest dog in the world and he has a lot of issues with uh, digestion and stuff like that so yeah that's that the one that i remember that I was going to talk about youtube and swear words um, i don't think i've spoken about this in a video uh, it's one that confuses me so i just said crap a little while ago 
I don't know if I can say that. And the thing that, that triggered that is, I might have spoken about it something. You know, re YouTube recently changed their policies on swearing. Um, and if you swear in the first few seconds, it can affect monetization. And then there's another little window where you can do a little bit more. And then I think beyond about 30 seconds, you're generally okay. But the bit that, that surprised me as we get on with beet harvesting and we're on the up down rows now is, um, and this has got to be an American thing. I think, because I don't consider them to be swear words, Google, I guess, or YouTube has now classified that hell and damn are not swear words. Now, I don't think in my life I have ever considered damn a swear word. And again, hell, I don't know. It's, maybe I was brought up in a really rough part of the world. Really? Um, but hell is a swear word. If it is to you, I apologize that I am swearing at you so much, but for me, nah. Um, that one really confused me. Um, and I guess it's maybe a cultural or a language thing. Um, and yet then there are lots of other weird cultural things that, you know, I could say and people would find massively offensive or someone could do and I would find massively offensive and they would think it was absolutely fine. Uh, yeah, so that... that that, that one really confused me and uh i suspect there's loads of things like that where you know i probably say th it probably happens i probably say things that i don't think are particularly offensive and some people find them massively offensive and yeah and, and i guess i do see it in some ways when you know people say stuff that they don't mean to be offensive and actually it does seem a little bit offensive so maybe maybe but yeah yes certainly hell and damn are not things i would consider swear words and I would have used them, I'm using them a lot now, I would have used them a lot in the past without considering them to be swear words. So yeah, that's, uh, that was one that kind of threw me, and uh, yeah, very strange, very strange. Yeah. And I guess this is one of the, uh, one of the strange things about being a content creator is sometimes you have to think about these things, it's like the K brand that you have to be careful saying i'm not going to say it i know some of you think that's really weird that i'm not saying it and think that you should just well just say it. it's just a brand name um the brand the k brand that got uh, mr cp and dj go hams videos demonetized i think last year um because it sounds like another word um and yeah it's, it's, it's some of those weird things that you have to think about that you know maybe you don't think about in everyday life um yeah and it's one of the nice things and this feeds really like really really nice segue to our uh, patrons and youtube channel members i want to say thank you for supporting the channel um yeah it's one of the really nice things about um using a site like patreon is that it is not completely independent but it's independent of google and youtube and uh, the fickleness of the almighty algorithm If you want to support the channel, go check out Patreon or uh, be a YouTube channel member. Uh, my opinion, um, Patreon is much better value for both of us. And I spoke about this a little while ago, and uh, so I'm not going to spend it each time. I get more of the cash, you get some extra videos. Kind of how it works. Um, link below. But anyway, uh, everyone that watches actually, um, I still find it quite cool, very cool. The uh, the community that is growing over on Discord. Um, lots of new people recently, lots of people chatting about stuff. It's really cool. Um, I actually find sometimes I struggle to not really keep up, but you know, if I'm I'm in work um, like today, I can't always keep up with the conversation or be involved in all of the conversation. I'll occasionally, so we're just, I've just finished, let's go back to the video, shall we? Um, there's a video playing in the background. Um, I've just finished harvesting field two. It's quite dark. Um, but the uh, the fit with our trailer has tipped and this is what's left so we've got 32,000 litres between these two trailers and we don't need to tip all of that I don't think so some of it will go towards the next contract which is quite cool um, uh, and these are not particularly big fields they're big-ish um, I don't like these trailers I think I might do a revision um, it's not the fact that the dolly trailers, they're really small, um, considering how much you get off of, so we had to deliver over 
200,000 litres of sugar beets um, with trailers that hold you know, this double trailer setup holds 16,000 litres it's just painfully slow so um, along with updating the harvesters potentially to something different I might change the tra trailer combo that's in this setup to uh, something that can haul a bit more we'll see I might, I might just change it on the bigger harvesting contract fields I'm not sure if I thought the I thought the double the big field setup had two harvesters in it but I'm now wondering whether it does or not I need to go and have a look at some point um, yeah so this will go towards some of the some of field one as well and I've totally forgotten what I was talking about discord yeah um, partly as it's got busier but not necessarily that um, I'm in the office more at the moment and when I'm in the office it's really hard for me to keep up with discord because uh, I don't have a computer that I can access it on when I'm in the office so I'm using my phone and generally if I'm in the office I'm working so uh, yeah if you know if there are days where it appears that I'm not really engaged in the conversation that's going on it's because probably I'm just busy um, like this evening is a classic example um so it's the next morning we uh we have a lot of milk so i've got a couple of trade loads of milk so i'm going to get that done while i do some feeding with the i forgot again the little tractor Jeez, that's bad um yeah like this, this evening um one my phone even my phone reception is bad and I'm going to have to see if I can find somewhere to put my phone so that I can at least chat to Mrs. D later. Um, but I have a choice. I can sit and chat on Discord, which is really fun, or I can finish making videos so you guys have something to watch. And for me, this is the perfect time for me to sit and finish making videos because I'm in a hotel on my own. I've got like four hours, five hours to uh, kill. I've got really bad internet, so I can't watch... You know, I can't particularly hammer watching YouTube or Netflix or anything. So, you know, it, it's turning into... Actually, I'm not away next Monday, but I'm away a lot of Mondays. And uh, actually, it, it's a Z-Tour. I knew it was a Z-Tour. Um, yeah, the cows needed some beets, and I think I needed to give them some silage as well. They seem to be eating really weirdly. Um, but, yeah, um, quite often I'm away on a Monday night. So what I do, and I think I spoke about this last Monday... I like to get a stack of videos queued up over the weekend to finish making. So, um, you know, I can sit on really dodgy internet and chat to people, or I can finish making videos. Because if I'm at home, I can't. I do sit and chat on Discord. If I'm working at home, I sit and chat on Discord sometimes. I don't tell my boss. Um, and you know, so there are some times when I will, uh, I won't be online. And, that's not a reflection of anything other than I have other things to do um, but I just wanted to say that because sometimes uh, whether people think that I'm you know I'm ignoring them I'm not I'm just you know it's probably going to be two or three hours tonight where it's I can't look at my phone while I'm recording you know I need to concentrate on one thing to uh, to try and make engaging content I guess so yeah I've sent the uh, words, the Deutz off um, on a run to sell the milk. So I'm using auto drive for that. The um, the Fiat Agri is still up with the beet harvesting kit. We'll, uh, we'll be using that for parking. Uh, the Z Tour is it's a really nice tractor for this. In fact, there is the Deutz. Uh, I'm going to need to jump out because it's not set to go back to the milk trigger to refill. But yeah, really nice that we're at. I want to, I don't know. I don't think we're at the point yet where we're producing two trailer loads of milk a day, but I think we're getting close. Um, and that's really cool because that's going to be meaning we're doing more than just paying the workers' wages off the milk. And that's before the second cow shed kicks in and the new cows that we brought. So, yeah, doing really well. I don't know whether, so we're going to get calves in the second shed in the next month, two months, I think. I don't know whether to keep them and grow them on or sell them and just take the cash or uh, and we're playing this game for the long term so we could just hang on to them because they'll get to the point where they produce milk eventually it's a long way off but yeah 
And actually, I haven't looked at it yet. And I feel really bad now because I've just remembered. Um, and I can't actually remember who it was that sent it to me. One of the guys, when I when we were streaming last week, um, one of the guys on Paul's um, Twitch stream had done something really cool where he'd set it up so that the milk from the cows cycled through through time kind of reflecting the fact that you know cows don't want you know once a cow's calved it doesn't produce max amount of milk for the rest of its entire life um and old seasons used to do that fs19 seasons used to it used to drop off after you know after the cow had calved and then it would stop and then the cow would calf again um and I think he sent me the sent me how he's done it. I think he's got it so that that's happening with maize plus. So you get the cycle, um, and then at five years they stop producing milk, um, and that's really intriguing to me. I need to have I'd forgotten about that until just now. I need to have a look at how he's done that, and I might throw it into here because I'm supposed to be playing on hard mode, and I'm going to be playing for a long time, and. It would be really cool if we got to the point where we had to sell some of the cows off because they'd stop producing milk. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to have a look at that at some point and integrate that in. Um, don't know if I can share it because it's work that he's done, and which means I might not include it. So one of the things that I really don't like is including stuff that I can't share with people. I really try not to do that. Um, and grazing is a bit tricky because I've shared with people how to set up grazing but not everyone wants to play with xml and like 3d files and you know giant tender 2 and stuff so um i get that but um i want to play with grazing um, and i can't just release you know, grazing files for other people's maps uh, calms and ones it was like, easier because uh, oxy released those because oxy's part of the farming and you're linked to the farming agency so we could do it through that. Um, I think I gave them to Paul, Paul gave them to Oxy, Oxy released them. That works. Um, Attingham, I haven't, I, I spoke to GB last year about releasing grazing files and he asked me to wait for the update. Um, I did send him a question back in October, which he hasn't answered. So I assume he's just very busy. Um, no idea where the update is to Attingham. Um, and so I can't release those. And, you know, I get that it's frustrating for people. Um, it is what it is, really, I guess. I'm hoping that as more maps come out in the future, people will set them up so they support grazing. I'm hoping that as people release pastures, they will support grazing. I had planned, and I didn't get around to doing it, I had planned over Christmas to make a bunch of different size and shape pastures for cows and sheep um, and maybe horses horses are sorry, cows and sheep predominantly um, that supported grazing so you could stick them in a field and you'd get you know you could kind of simulate moving your cows around and stuff I never got around to doing it because I got ill over Christmas and I didn't really feel like doing very much at all um, and I just haven't had time since god this this year has been so busy and so much has happened and so here this little plot of land is really intriguing to me it's a little way from the farm but 27 grand it's a nice little plot of wood of woodland yeah i'm, I'm curious about that we may come back there at some point um yeah this year has been so busy you know with dad being ill and broker having a couple of instances of being ill and then work's been quite busy this this last few weeks. Yeah. And I'm back. Probably a lot of you don't care about this, but it's one of the reasons I haven't, haven't had time, as much time to do stuff. I'm back train, training pretty properly now. Um, I have an ultra marathon in May, and so having really slacked off at the last half of last year, I'm uh, trying to be much more dedicated with my training. And so, you know, that is taking up probably 10 hours a week or more. Um, basically, most of sat half of Saturday is gone. So, you know, um, 
and quite often uh, weekends. So we are, I think we are done. I think we are done. Um, yeah, so these four trailers are full. We have tipped a, a trailer full of beets back at the farm and there is a park trailer waiting. Um, so these will complete the contract and then the Fiat is back at the farm with a part trailer which is also us so i think we got about twenty-three thousand liters of beets off of these two contracts plus what we're going to get paid so i'm pretty pleased with that if i'm honest um nice bit of cash in the bank uh, actually that would almost pay for that extra plot of land that we were just looking at not sure what we're going to do with cash yet um i'm not actually sure what we're going to do in the next video either so we'll see it'll be a new month probably we'll probably skip ahead to uh, october um might be third cut might wait till november for that so i might just be skipping some time might be some field work i'm not sure um we're still going with the whole we'll just log in and play so it might be more contracts the other thing i've done is i've switched lazy farmers off for harvesting contracts so the rest of the fields should get harvest will probably get harvested there are a lot more harvesting contracts already which means there'll be some other ones we can play with like some cultivating and some seeding and some stuff like that um yeah one of the downsides of leaving lazy farmers on is the fields don't get harvested so you don't things don't cycle through so um i might end up turning it back on all of them because there's quite a lot of contracts on here anyway it's always bailing contracts i might end up doing a bailing contract next month we'll see who knows um one thing i do like about the dual trailers is dual tipping i just find it it, it it makes me happy. I don't know why. And I kind of wonder... Actually, thank you to... I haven't looked yet. Whoever it was who told me uh, after the Ohio video about... Uh, Millennial Farmer talks about the mechanics of folding corn headers. I've got to have a look at that. That's really cool. What inspired me thinking about that was... I wonder about the... I'm assuming... You know, the center of gravity must be fine. But... I guess that's why you don't tip very far because otherwise your center of gravity would shift a long way and your trailer would start to tip a little bit they're real trailers so it must work so yeah um yeah i guess the center of gravity is still inside the wheelbase at that point yeah i should shut up oh well, i'm sure it's fine i'm i'm sure wengler know how to make trailers they do it in real life i don't so i should probably just shut up and uh get back to talky talky um so let's uh redeem these two contracts and so nine and a half grand and eleven and a half grand pretty nice um and as i said eleven and another eleven and a half thousand so twenty three and a half twenty four thousand liters of sugar beets which uh not bad it yeah there's probably in uh we're we using about four thousand yeah it will last us a little while i'm pretty sure we've got enough to get through the winter with this two point half curious as to what point we are going to have to start feeding on time and grass is going to stop growing i still need to look in the geo and check what that is because i keep forgetting to look and uh, you'd think i'd know because i made it but i don't remember uh, yeah we'll see we're going to give this a wash the reason that the um the repair status is so bad on the tractor is the front loader needs a service I don't like service in front loaders because they still function, but probably going to have to because the red bar is annoying me. And in reality, you probably would, you know, probably having to, uh, I don't know, check seals and hoses and top levels up and all that kind of stuff. Maybe it needs a few new hoses for the hydraulics, something like that. Bit of grease, I guess. So, yeah, we probably should repair it. Same with trailers. I never repair trailers. You guys ever repair trailers? Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, that's probably enough waffling for now. So I'm going to say thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, comments, questions, suggestions below. And if you enjoyed the video and you're not already, think about subscribing and turning on notifications. And I will see you next time on Maple Farm.